Hello there friends and welcome back to my crafty space. My name is Crystal and in today's video we're going to be working on October Daily 2021 story number three and four. Now the video footage that you're seeing here was actually recorded live over on my Patreon and I have taken that video footage, sped it up, and we're going to voice over here to just talk about the process I went through to create today's layout. For story number three, I am using the journaling prompt, Do You Believe in Ghosts?, which is part of my 31 Halloween journaling prompts that I posted both on Instagram and over on my blog, and I'll link that down in the description box for you. This prompt was really fun to write about. I don't know if I had ever really sat down and thought about my answer to this question before, and I enjoyed the process of thinking it through and getting those thoughts down on paper. To create this layout, the first thing I wanted to do was take a photo that resembled some kind of ghost-like figure. I love using the Snapchat filters this time of year because they always have the coolest ones. I found this one that you can see here printed on the vellum that was this really spooky type of ghost filter. I purposefully put my finger up to my lips as though I am telling you a secret and telling you to keep my secret snapped a picture, and then printed that picture out on vellum. The reason I did that is because I wanted to be able to see through the photo to the journaling behind or just have it barely visible. And then uh, when you flip the photo over, the vellum photo, to the opposite side, you can still see the photo on the back side. So I thought that that was kind of a really cool effect for this layout. I wanted to make the page easier to turn, which is why I added the Avery index tab to the right side of it. And then for the inside of that tab, I'm using some of the remaining sticker, the washi sticker, um, and then I'm putting a tiny phrase sticker on top of that and just a tiny phrase sticker that has some kind of ghostly type of saying on top of it because I thought that that was pretty cute for for this particular story. So now we're going to finish up working on the journaling page. I did earlier pull off that little ghost sticker from the sticker sheet. And the sticker sheet that I pulled out is my last year's collection, the Halloween Market from Cartabella. I have a bunch of those stickers remaining. So, you know, it's just a matter of figuring out layouts that they go well on. So the little ghost goes on this one. And then I'm also going to bring over my Hey Pumpkin clear stickers from a couple years back to fill in some more of that white space. I also wanted to add a number onto this layout so we can designate this as story number three. I found this wood veneer three, which is an older color cast design number release. I actually believe it was the 2020 December daily numbers that uh, Jessica made in her shop. So color cast design is that one. So I took the number three, put that on top of the vellum in the bottom right hand corner, and then layered another tiny phrase sticker and a black enamel dot with that to create this little cluster in the bottom corner. Here's where you can see that I'm filling in a lot more of that white space with some of these clear stickers. I put them down and then realized I was they were a little bit um, too far to, I think, the left. So I readjusted everything, got it all on there, and then I'm going to add one more that is just a black word. So some of them say, they're like in little banners that say boo and... Um, I don't remember what else, spooky maybe. And then at the very bottom, I have the word eek. So love the way that that turned out. I'm going to go ahead, hole punch everything, and then we can get this inside of my album and show you what this looks like now that it's all done. Actually, I don't know if I'll show it to you in the album, maybe at the end. All right, so next we're going to move on. Oh, yep, here we go. We're going to move on to story number four. So for story number four, I am going to be telling the story about, um, or it's, it's the prompt, to write a letter to my favorite Halloween character or characters. Now, my favorite characters, my absolute favorite movie and 
all of that from Halloween is Hocus Pocus. So for this one, I wanted to um, create a layout that would honor the Sanderson sisters that includes a letter that I wrote to them. And then I also called up my sister the day before I did this this layout and asked her if she would want to meet me for lunch. And she's like, yeah, you know, let's go ahead and go out to lunch. I said, great, dress up in something kind of witchy. So then I went up and picked her up and took her out to lunch. And while we were out, we snapped some pictures together in our witchy outfits, um, like casting spells. And we just had a really fun time doing a little photo shoot together because I wanted to use a photo of the two of us to go along with this story for today. Part of the reason why I love the Sanderson sisters so much, beyond the fact that they're all super quirky and they, you know, I love their music. I love their songs. They're, they're so like witty as well. Love the humor that they bring, but I also super enjoy their relationships to each other as, you know, as sisters. So I wanted to hone in on that portion of them. So what they are like or the things that I admire about their sister relationships with each other and to use that to tell the story about the relationship that I have with my own sister. So to create this layout, what I did first was to create my journaling on or to print some journaling on some white cardstock. And I wanted to leave enough room at the top to be able to add this really fun cut file, which is a silhouette of the three Sanderson sisters, and then a couple of strips of washi to close in the top and the bottom. So that helps to give me some um, like bookends almost <laughs> on my story. It helps it to look a little bit more cohesive. So the first one I did was this candy corn orange and white stripe washi. And the second one I did was, um, it was black with white numbers on top. I believe that was part of the Heidi Swap collection from this year. And then the cup file was one that I purchased from Etsy, I believe. And I will be sure to link the cup files and the PNGs that I used to create cup files in the description box down below. So the next thing I wanted to do was create this interactive pocket cauldron. I just got my silhouette hooked up in my studio, which makes me so happy because I love to use cut files in my special occasion albums like this one. So I wanted to do this cauldron and I wanted it to be able to pull out some extra story from inside of it. So what I did is I searched online for a free cauldron PNG. I saved that and then pulled it open in silhouette, traced it and turned it into a cut file. I then cut it twice so I could layer it on top of each other in order to make a pocket. And soon you'll see that I'm actually going to stitch the whole thing together so that I can slide some, uh, an additional card in and out from the cauldron. The reason I choose to stitch my pockets closed is because although you can use um, adhesive, you can use wet glue, you can use score tape, all of those will work to create pockets and they're totally fine. However, because there is a little bit of sticky when it comes to that type of adhesive, when you're sticking a card down inside of the pocket, there is a high likelihood that it's going to touch some of the sticky parts in there. And that makes it a little bit more difficult to take it out and put it back in. So whenever possible, I like to stitch my pockets closed. Um, if all you have is adhesive and you don't have a sewing machine, that will work too. But I just want you to know why a lot of times I will put stitching on mine. So next what we're going to do here is get the attacher piece in there. I trimmed out a piece of plastic transparency and put that on the left-hand side of the cauldron so that, or on the back side of 
the left side of the cauldron. I hole punched it, so that's going to go directly into my album. And then this little cauldron piece is going to be its own section that will be able to flip over. I pulled one other cut file from online, it's one that I purchased, that had the title Sistas. So I wanted this one because there is a scene in Hocus Pocus where Winifred or Winnie yells to her sisters and she's like, Sistas? So I thought that that would be a fun title for this whole layout, which is all about sisters. Um, so that's my title on top of the cauldron. I printed that or I didn't print it. I cut it out on my silhouette with orange and then just went ahead and adhered that down on top of the cauldron. And it's already turning out super cute. So we've got it stitched close. You can see how the little attacher piece is going to work there. I purposefully oriented the camera so that there was a lot of space at the bottom of the photo of my sister and myself so that when I put the cauldron on top of us, it could look almost like we're casting a spell or something inside of the cauldron. And I love the effect that that had when we get this all the way put together. Now, the next thing I needed to do was build the section that I'm going to use to pull my journaling card from behind or from in between the cauldron itself. I printed a bunch of these, I didn't print, I cut a bunch of these circles in different sizes from green textured cardstock. So I have this like more vibrant green and then I have a more muted green and you'll see how I layer those up to give this a little bit more dimension. Actually, that's a lie. I don't actually use the muted one. I just use the bright colored one, but in a couple of different sizes. So what I'm going to do is attach a portion of them to the top of the journaling piece. And this journaling card is really small. On one side of the card, there's actually a recipe card that I pulled. It was a free download. Again, I'll put that link down in the description box for you, but it's like a Halloween recipe card and I altered it so that I could create a quote unquote spell or ingredients list for a spell for sisterhood. I called it the sisterhood spell. I totally made it up based on some things that I found on Pinterest. I just went on Pinterest and I searched like which spell ingredients and then that pulled up a list for me and I used the list where it's like you know, protection and here's all different kinds of things that you can use that that are protective, I don't know, and things for love and things for strength and, you know, that all that kind of stuff. So I pulled out a variety of those and added them to the recipe card for my potion. And then on the back side of it, I have a little bit of journaling about taking my sister out for lunch and how we had a really great time. So that's what's going inside of the cauldron. And you can see how there are some of the larger, you know, quote unquote, bubbles are attached to the top of the of that card. Then on the cauldron itself, I am creating this cluster so that it looks as though the bubbles are coming off of the cauldron. So you can see how that's going to look there. And then the card just slips down inside and it gives it an extra layer of the bubbles on there. So you can see how that's going to look there. I so, so love the way that this one turns out. So it's going to flip over and then on the back side, I'm going to put my number four to designate this as story number four. I chose this blue colored number four because it has a lot of the same tones as the witch's hat that I am wearing in the photo, which is a hat that mimics Fleur de Liqueur's uh, witch's hat from the Harry Potter series. Really love that hat. I It was actually an impulse buy and it might be one of my favorite impulse buys of the season. I found it on Amazon, which I'll put that in the link in the description too, a link to that in case you're looking for a really cool witch's hat. I felt like the photo needed something a little bit extra on it because I, you know, there's no embellishments or anything on the photo. And I totally could have just left it and let it speak for itself. But what I decided to do instead was to grab over my clear stickers from the Hey Pumpkin collection in addition to some older puffy stickers from the same from the same collection and grab all of the little 
asterisk stars, like sparkle stars, and add those throughout the layout. I debated adding a word on there and then decided against that and then just filled it in with more of these stars. Once I get all of those on there, let me see if I'm going to do any more. I think that might be it or, oh, you know what? There was a couple little pink stars as well and I'm going to add those on there. And then once I have all of that done, this layout is going to be complete. All right, friends. Well, that is going to be it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, I would love a thumbs up down below. Also, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I will see you back here again tomorrow for a story kit crush process video. And then again on Saturday for the next couple of layouts in this October daily album. Until then, friends, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll catch you in the next videos. Bye, friends.